Glory to God. Greetings to you in the most wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Situations may seem difficult for us to come together and praise and worship God. But thank God we can still praise and worship God through this online service. Our God is good. Our God is faithful. Shall we pray and begin this morning's service? Every eye closed in the presence of God. Let's begin to feel the presence of the Lord God. Great is our God and is ready to be praised. If you can just lift up your voice for the next few moments and begin to worship God. It's a great blessing to begin our service praising and worshiping God. Because it's our praise and worship that brings out the presence of God. And all that we need this morning is God's presence. Come on church, I just encourage you this morning to freely worship God. Oh, we just want to thank you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. For thou, O Lord, art I above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above. shall we pray loving heavenly father we just want to thank and praise you for this very special day that thou has ordained in each one of our lives oh god another day to come together to sing your praises and worship you because thou alone art worthy of all the praises of father dear we have come this morning to exalt the name that's above every other name the name of jesus christ fill our hearts with love for you this morning pray god you grant each one of us a free spirit to worship you let your name alone be glorified, magnified a God. Whatever is said and done this morning, let it bring glory and honor to your holy name. For we ask all these things in the most wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome each one of you this morning to this very special online service. Church, let's clap our hands. Let's rejoice. Let's worship the Lord God. And let's magnify his name together. I just encourage you, clap your hands. Rejoice, sing aloud, and praise and worship God. Let's arise and sing and magnify the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Sing, 
like praising and worshiping of a God. God has done great and mighty things for each one of us. And the best that we can give to God this morning is our hearts worship. We're going to sing a very thoughtful song this morning. Jesus is our Savior. We shall never be moved. How many believe it this morning? Situations may be difficult in each one of our lives because we have put our faith and trust in God who is our solid rock. We shall never be moved. I'm a believer this morning. I shall never be moved. I shall never be moved because God is with me. I have put my faith on the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a believer this morning. If you believe it, let's lift up our voice, church, and let's proclaim it. Let's sing aloud this morning and glorify the name of the Lord. Jesus is our Savior. We shall not be moved. Rejoice as you sing and praise and worship God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Here we go, church. Jesus is our Savior. We shall not 
situation and circumstance therefore we can boldly say we shall never be moved hallelujah we're going to worship God church for the next few moments God's wonderful presence is in this place just I want desire Lord I've come here to worship you God you alone are my heart's desire none to be ever compared with you God the Bible says in Psalm 98 and verse 1 Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he had done marvelous things. How many can reflect on the wonderful things that God has done in each one of our lives? He's been so good. He's been so mindful of each one of us. The greatest thing that God has done in each one of our lives is He has redeemed us. We've been reconciled back to God. And we can praise and worship God for the greatest gift of salvation that God has given us. We were once far away from God. But thank God we have been reconciled back to God. God did great and mighty things in each one of our lives. And church, if you have a grateful heart this morning, just lift up your voice. 
reflect on the good things that God had done in your life. I have a heart of gratitude this morning and tell the Lord this morning, I've just come to praise you, God. I've just come to worship you, God. Lift up your voice, church, and begin to worship Him. Oh, we praise you, Lord. There's no one like you, God. You're altogether so beautiful. Tell the Lord this morning. I just want to praise you. Lift my hands and say, I love you. You are everything to me. And I exalt your holy name. Exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. Oh, oh with heart filled with love for God this morning. I just want to praise you, Lord. I just want to praise you. Lift my hands and say, I love you.
voice, church, and begin to worship the Lord. Begin to feel the presence of the Lord. The most important thing this morning is experiencing the presence of God. Just begin to worship Him. May this be your heart's desire. Lord, this is my desire, Lord. I have no other desire, but my only desire is to worship you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. This is my desire to honor you, Holy God, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. It's not my will, O oh God, but it's thy will that should be done in my life. My brother, sister, the most important thing in each one of our lives is doing the perfect will of God. When you are in the perfect will of God, you can experience God's presence, God's preservation, and God's provision. Take a decision this morning in God's holy presence. I just want your perfect will to be done in my life, God. Let thy will be done, not my will, God. If you have the desire this morning, your life will be blessed. Your life will become a blessing and God's name will be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Shall we pray? Most gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we just want to thank and praise you for this blessed time of worship. It's such a joy to come together, Lord, and sing your praises and to worship you. We thank you for your sweet presence in our midst. We just surrender everything to you this morning. Let your perfect will be done in each one of our lives. May our lives bring glory and honor to your name, Father. We just want to thank you once again for what you've been in each one of our lives. And now, Father dear, we have come to listen to your word. Speak your words to each one of us this morning. Give us listening ears and a receptive heart. And let your name alone be highly exalted and glorified. We humble ourselves before you this morning. We vow to give you all the glory and the honor. For we ask all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.
Shall we proceed under God's word this morning? And I want to share with you on the subject, fulfilling God's purposes. Fulfilling God's purpose. This is something very, very important. The very purpose of our Christian life is to fulfill God's plan and God's purpose. I don't know how many of you have taken this seriously. Probably we are busy with so many things. But I don't know how many of you have given a very serious thought about this one matter of fulfilling God's plan, God's purpose, fulfilling God's will in our life. I believe the Holy Spirit will minister to us. Amen. God has called each one of us to fulfill His perfect plan, His purpose, His will in our lives. I believe when God's people finish the course on this earth, they will receive three kinds of remarks. One third of the people finish the race with a divine remark, good, good. We know that Apostle Paul says, I fought a good fight and finished my course. And the Lord called those faithful servants, well done, thou good and faithful servants, enter into my rest. The other one third of the people, when they finish the race, they will receive a divine remark saying, not bad, not bad. And the last group, the last one third of the people, when they finish the life here on this earth, they will receive the remark, worst. I don't know about you. Church, it's not that how we begin our Christian life. The most important thing is how we end our Christian life. Amen. I just wanted to think of the end of King Saul, the predecessor of David. His end was a tragedy. How many of you know he committed suicide on Mount Gilboa? And all his three sons died on the very same day in the battle. And David was observing all these things very keenly, was extra careful about his own end. And David had chosen a good end. That's very important. David was very keenly observing the life of Saul. He observed the end of Saul. And David took notice of it. And it was a very great lesson to him. And David was extra careful about his own end. Church, that's what God expects from you and me. Even this morning I want to share with you from the life of David. If you want to know more about godliness, you have to study the life of David. If you want to know about the ministry, you have to study the life of Apostle Paul. If you want to know the subject on holiness, you have to study the life of Joseph and Daniel. So we are studying on the subject of godliness. David was a godly man. When he was 17 years old, when he was in Bethlehem, he received the initial anointing. On one fine morning, Prophet Samuel came to his house, to the house of Jesse. We all know the story how David was anointed to be the king over Israel by Prophet Samuel. He was just 17 years old. After his initial anointing, God kept David in Bethlehem for the next seven years. At the end of seven years, God took David to Adulam cave, kept him there for another seven years for vigorous training. At the end of seven years in Adulam, God took David where? Where did God take him? To Hebron. And God kept him in Hebron for another seven years. God made him king over Judah. After his seven years reign in Hebron, finally God took him to Zion. And there for 33 years, 
He reigned over the entire nation of Israel for 33 years. So total lifespan of David was 70 years. See how God had wonderfully calculated his life. And he was a man who fulfilled God's plan and purpose in his life. And David is a very good example for us. Amen. I want you to turn your Bible this morning to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. To see something very interesting. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Let's read verse 22. Acts 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, when he had removed Saul, God raised up unto them David to be the king, to whom also God gave testimony. That's very important. It's not man giving a testimony about somebody. God gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will, which shall fulfill all my plans and purposes. What a testimony. Judge how many of you have a desire to get this testimony from the Lord? Amen. I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amazing. And David, God had great expectation from David. And David did fulfill the plan and purpose of God. See the very same chapter, verse 36. For David, after he had served in his own generation, come on, finish it. By the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. David, after he had served in his own generation by the will of God. See how wonderfully the Holy Spirit has included that part of the phrase into the life of David. Served in his own generation by the will of God. Then fell on sleep. Then he died. Amen. According to this verse, David had a glorious end. David who captured Zion, dwelt in Zion for 33 years and reigned over Israel and fulfilled the divine plan and purpose of God in his life. It will be wonderful if all God's people understand these truths these days. Church, I want you to think about it. Why does God bless a person? To fulfill his plan. Amen. Why does God exalt a person? Or why does God use a person? It's all for one grand purpose. It is to fulfill God's plan. Amen. See what Mordecai told Esther. Very familiar text in Esther. Book of Esther chapter 4 verse 14. You need not turn the pages of your Bible. You know it already. Who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Church, think about this. Did God exalt, did God exalt Esther just for her to enjoy the comforts of palace? She was just an orphan girl, but God made her a queen. What is the reason? What is the reason? God had a plan to spare the lives of the Jews in the nation. God wanted to deliver the Jews. So in order to fulfill that plan and purpose, God chose this one lady. God chose this woman Esther. Took her to the palace. Why does God bless a person? Why does God bless you? Need to ask this question. Why does God bless the business of his people? Why does God give promotion to his people in the secular job? Why does God give good health and strength to his people? Why does God give gifts and talents to his people? Why does God bless his people financially? Why does God give, a, give his people a good spiritual church? It's all summed up to one purpose. 
and that is to fulfill his plan, his purpose in our lives. Think of a young man without a job. He comes to the Lord. He seeks the Lord. And servants of God, they pray for him. Then he gets a good job. Servants of God continue to pray for him. He gets married. But what does the ring man do? He forsakes the fellowship and goes on his own way. But why did God do all these good things to the ring man? What is the reason? So that he would fulfill God's plan in his life. But do you know what the ring man does? Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1. I don't know to whom God is speaking. But I know God is speaking to somebody. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1. What does an ink man do? Through desire a man having separated himself. He separates himself from the fellowship once he receives the blessing. Once he receives the goodness of God. That man because of his desires for other things. He separates himself from the fellowship. He separates himself from godly people. Seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. He tries to act very smart with God. <laughs> he says, I have no time for you, Lord. I'm very busy. I have no time to go to church. I don't have time to fellowship with your people. Did you get it? Proverbs 18.1. Yes. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Now he thinks he's very wise. Now he thinks he knows everything. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. On the other end, David was faithful to the Lord who exalted him. By fulfilling God's plan and purpose in his life. Church, let us meditate this morning with the help of the Holy Spirit. To know, to understand how David fulfilled God's purpose in his life. I'm talking about David's life in Zion. How David fulfilled God's purpose in Zion. Number one, in Zion, David sought for the ark of God. Oh, really, I was touched. As I was meditating God's word, I felt the Spirit of God ministering to me. And I know the same Holy Spirit will minister to you this morning as well. David, in Zion, David sought for the ark of God. David, who knew God's purpose in his life, first of all, first of all, sought for the ark of God in Zion. That was the wisest thing David ever did in Zion. The first thing what David did in Zion. He sought for the ark of God. He went after the ark of God. He searched for the ark of God. The main reason for Saul's failure. Was that he did not seek after the ark of God. Saul, throughout his reign in Israel, he was the first king over Israel. But he never sought for the ark of God in his life. You know what the Bible says? Turn your Bible for a moment to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. Look at your own Bibles. 1 Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 3. Very important verse in the Bible. 1 Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 3. See what David says. Let us bring again the ark of God to us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. This was one of the reasons for Saul's failure. Let us bring again the ark of our God to us. The ark of God is not with us. The ark of God is far away from us. For we inquired not at it 
In the days of Saul, all the days of Saul, the heart of God was forgotten. Was forgotten. Church, I know God is speaking to us. The main reason for Saul's failure was that he did not seek after the ark of God. God blessed him. He was an ordinary man going after a donkey. He was a man who went in search of his father's donkeys. Insignificant man. He was nobody. But God in his mercy blessed this man. Exalted him, lifted him up, made him the first king over Israel. But he never thought about the heart of God. How many of you know God is speaking to you? Ark of God typifies God's presence. The presence of God. Friend, are you seeking after God's presence? How God has been so gracious to you. How much God has blessed you. How wonderfully God protected you, preserved you. Are you seeking after God's presence in your life? Or you're like Saul, totally, you know, forget the presence of the Lord. Search your heart this morning. The reason... For the tragic end, listen to me, the reason for the tragic end, not only of Saul, but also the reason for the tragic end of Hophni and Phinehas, who were they? Sons of Eli, the priest. What was the reason for the tragic end of these two young men? Again, they were just before Saul. Saul should have learned a lesson from this. But he failed to learn a lesson. They were just before Saul. What is that reason for the tragic end of these two young men? The reason is they lost the ark of God. They lost the ark of God. Look in your Bibles to see what the Holy Spirit says in 1 Samuel chapter 4 verse 11. 1 Samuel Chapter 4 and verse 11. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli. Ophni and Phinehas. Were slain. Can you see the connection? They lost the presence of God. And therefore they lost God's protection. They were slain in the battle. What a tragic end, my friend. What is the reason? They lost the ark of God. They lost the presence of God. Will you make sure in your life this morning? Lord, I can afford to lose anything in my life, but not your presence. Is there anybody who can say that this All that I need is your presence, Lord. I can lose my wealth. I can lose all my properties. I can lose all that I have. But not your presence God. Not your presence. Amen. David understood this truth very clearly. Saul failed to learn this lesson. From the life of Hophni and Phinehas. But David was very careful to observe Saul. And he became extra careful. That's the reason the moment he came to Zion, he said, I'm going to seek after the ark of God first. Amen. When we fail to learn lessons in life, we are in trouble. God wants us to learn things. When you see somebody without the presence of God, take that as a warning. When you see God's presence with somebody, take it as an example. Learn something. Learn something. Sky is the limit for learning. When a person stops learning, his growth is stunted. He stops to grow. 
God wants us to learn. The first thing that David did in Zion was he searched for the ark of God. Sister, brother, why should we search for the ark of God? Why should we seek after the ark of God? There are many reasons given in the Bible. The real blessings are only in the ark of God. When I say the ark of God, what is it? The presence of God. Where is your blessing, brother? It's in the presence of God that is with you. Don't search for blessing anywhere else. Sorry to say it to the young people. They go all around searching for blessing. Searching for jobs. Amen. Blessing is only in God's presence. Nowhere else. What does the Bible say? The ark of God was in the house of Obadidam for how many months? For three months. What does the Bible say? God blessed him and his household. Just three months. The ark of God was in the house of Obadidam. The presence of God was in the house of Obadidam. The Bible says God blessed him and his household. Where is your blessing, brother? Sister, where is your blessing? In the presence of the Lord. If you lose the presence of God, it means you are losing the blessing of God in your life. God's blessing is in God's presence. Where is the glory? Glory and power is in the heart of God. Amen. When Phinehas' wife brought forth a child, she named the child Ichabod. Ichabod means what? Glory departed. Amen. Glory departed. When she brought forth the child, she said, Glory is departed. Listen to this. Glory is departed for the ark is, ark of God is taken. So where does glory rest? The ark of God. Not only blessings and the ark of God, God's glory and power is in the ark of God. Do you know what Psalmist says? Turn your Bible to Psalm 132 verse 8. Psalm 132 and verse 8. Look at your Bibles. Mark these verses. God is speaking to you. Psalm 132 and verse 8. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou and the hawk of thy strength. Where is your strength? In the ark of God. Your strength is in God's presence. The power, glory, blessing in the heart of God. How many of you know when the priests, when they bore the heart of God, when the feet touched the brim of the water of River Jordan, what does the Bible say? The River Jordan parted into two. Miracle in the heart of God. Supernatural things can happen in the presence of the Lord. Or is standing before River Jordan, overflowing flowing Jordan, or is standing before an obstacle. The secret is God's presence with you. If you bear the presence of the Lord, no overflowing Jordan can stand before you. Somebody say, amen. if you're a man, if you're a woman bearing the presence of the Lord, no overflowing Jordan can stand before you as an obstacle. It should give way. Amen. Hallelujah. Every time the people of Israel went for battle, they made sure to carry the ark of God with them. Because it was God's presence who brought them victory. Now do you understand why David searched for the ark of God? There's blessing in the ark of God. Glory and power in the ark of God. Amen. Strength in the ark of God. Miracles in the ark of God. Victory in the ark of God. How many of you want the presence of God? Don't ask for blessing. Don't ask for victory. Don't ask for miracle. Ask for God's presence. Miracles will follow. Blessings will follow. Supernatural things will follow. Strength will follow. Amen. 
David sought for this ark of God because he knew these truths. He knew these truths. On the other hand, Saul, all through his life, sought for David's life. What a difference. What a contrast. Saul literally wasted his life in seeking after David's life, but David was all along seeking after God's presence. If you're a man, if you're a woman seeking after God's presence, nobody can seek after your life even if they want to. They cannot touch you. Amen. I'm 100% sure. If God is with me, who can be against me? If God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for you, friend, brother, who can be against you? Man cannot do anything, anything. He can try all evil schemes against you. What does the Bible say? David waxed stronger and stronger. Saul and his family. What is the reason? Not the anointing. One man seeking after God's presence. Another man seeking after his life. If somebody tries to harm you, if you are a man seeking after the presence of God, and if somebody is trying to harm you, you will become weaker and weaker and weaker day by day. On the other hand, you will become stronger, stronger and stronger. This is a biblical truth. I am speaking from my own experience. If you are a man, if you are a woman seeking after God's presence, and if somebody tries to harm you, that person will become weaker. His family will become weaker. His generation will become weaker. Other hand, he will grow stronger and stronger. Amen. Saul sought after human help. But he never sought after the ark of God. Church, I want to ask you this morning. Today, what are we searching for? Today, Begin what we are running after. What does the Lord say? He that seeketh me early shall find me. What does Jesus say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. King David is an example. See what God says about David. Turn your Bible this morning to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. Look in your Bibles. I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 13, reading from verse 1. David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you and that if be the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel and with them also to the priests and the Levites which are in the cities and suburbs that they may gather themselves unto us and let us bring again the ark of a God to us. Let us bring again the ark of a God to us for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. Verse 4 And all the congregation said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. Amen. That's the reason God said he's a man after my own heart because he's a man always seeking after my presence. Amen. Church, when we are blessed, listen to this. When we are blessed and exalted by the Lord, we need to do things very, very carefully. We need to become extra careful when God blesses you, when God promotes you, when God uses you, when God lifts you up. You must become, I must become extra careful. What does it mean to seek after the ark of God? David, listen to me. David also, to some extent, failure. We need to learn something from the life of David. David searched after the ark of God, but did not search for the word of God. 
That's where David also failed. This is a warning for us. Did you hear me what I said? David searched for the ark of God but did not search for the word of God. Because only in the word of God the instruction is given how to carry the ark of God. Or can I put it this way? Finding the ark of God without the word of God is dangerous. Finding the ark of God without the word of God is dangerous. Because only in the word of God the instruction is given how to handle the presence of God. If you do not know the word we will handle God's presence in the wrong way and God's anger will be kindled against us. How many of you follow me this morning? Now, David found the ark of God the moment he came to Zion, searched for it, found the ark of God. In order to bring the ark of God, David first of all acted according to human intelligence. This is where we need to learn the lesson. David deployed human strategies and human methods to bring the ark of God, presence of God into Jerusalem, into Zion. We all know what happened. What happened? Anger of the Lord was kindled. Turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 2 and 3. Look at your Bibles. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 2 and 3. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. Listen, verse 3. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Usa and Eo, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. Now look at verse 6 and 7. And when they came to Nahum's threshing floor, Usa put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the ox and shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Usa, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God died by the ark of God. Verse 7. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Usa. God smote him there. Church, we need to know how to handle God's presence. Many God's people, they do not know how to handle the presence of God. They try to handle God's presence in their own human ways, human methods. That's the reason we need to, need to know the word of God first. That's why I said it's dangerous. Finding the ark of God without finding the word of God is dangerous. Now later David corrected himself. Listen to me. Corrected himself later. David corrected himself and brought the ark of God According to God's plan. David was willing to accept correction. Although he was a king over Israel. He was a man who was willing to accept correction. This is a problem with many people today. Do you know that many believers cannot accept correction? It simply means there is no humility. That's some element of pride. If we are not willing to accept correction. If I say nobody can correct me. That means there is an element of pride somewhere. God will become an enemy to me. God resists the proud. Giveth grace to the humble. But such a great man king over Israel. Was willing to correct himself. Was willing to humble himself. Friend always welcome correction. Invite correction. It's a blessing. When somebody corrects us, we must sincerely thank that person. If somebody corrects me, I really love that person. I thank God for that person. Otherwise, I'll be in that 
same, you know, error all through my life. It was not God's plan to bring the ark of God upon a new court. It was a pagan method. God had already revealed his plan to Moses, the method of carrying the ark of God. What is the method? On his shoulder. Study your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 15. Look at your Bibles. 1 Chronicles, don't think that you know everything. That's dangerous again. That's pride. I also need to turn the pages of the Bible. 1 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 15. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon. As Moses commanded according to the word of God. As Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. That's very important. Friend, it was not God's plan that the hawk should be brought in the, on the new court, upon a new court. Because God had already revealed his plan to Moses. The method of carrying the presence of God. The method of carrying the ark of God. Ark of God was not sent, it was carried. Not sending, carrying. The Levites should bear the ark of God upon the shoulders. That is God's plan. That's God's method. You and I, we are called to bear the presence of God wherever we go. Make sure others may not come with you. You may walk all alone. You may go all by yourself. But make sure to bear the presence of the Lord. Before you walk out of your threshold, say, Lord, come with me. I need your presence. Without you I cannot Lord. I need you every moment of the day. Church. We are called to bring down the presence of God. To bring down God's presence. We should not use our clever ideas. And human methods. Don't mistake me. I am telling the truth. In some churches. They think if they have good music, they can bring down God's presence. So they employ good musicians, but not bother about whether they are saved or dedicated to the Lord. They don't mind using even drug addicts and alcoholics as musicians in the church just to have good music. And they think by having good music, they can bring down God's presence. Utter foolishness. They want good music. Think about this. Good singer, but a sinner. Can God's presence be felt? Can God's presence be there? No. This is something like David trying to bring the hawk of God upon the new court. Sometimes... We try to adopt human cleverness, human methods, human strategies to bring down God's presence. Friend, that is dangerous. Do you know something? God commanded Moses to construct the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament tabernacle. And when Solomon built the magnificent temple, the first temple, Magnificent temple. He did exactly like the tabernacle, Old Testament tabernacle, replica of the Old Testament tabernacle, the outer court, the inner court, the holy place, the most holy place. He could copy everything from the Old Testament tabernacle, what Moses did. But how many of you know Solomon could not duplicate the Ark of the Covenant? He had to bring the very same Ark of the Covenant into the most holy place which he built. Do you understand what I am saying? You can duplicate anything in life. You cannot duplicate the presence of God. You cannot duplicate the presence of God. 
Music cannot bring down God's presence. Sophisticated equipment cannot bring down God's presence. A good infrastructure, a good building cannot bring down God's presence. If somebody tries to bring down God's presence through some of the human cleverness, it's something like David bringing the ark of God upon a new cart. Bible says, the anger of the Lord was kindled. Thank God David realized this mistake. Amazing. David corrected himself and deployed the Levites to bear the ark of God upon the shoulders. Who were these Levites? People separated from others. People separated unto God. Friend, who can bear the presence of God? Only those who are separated from the world. Only those who are separated from other people. Only those who are separated unto God. Can bear the presence of the Lord. Amen. He employed the Levites. Separated people. Separated people. To bear the ark of God upon the shoulders. I'm always very careful. I'm I really, in fact, I'm very scared to do certain things. I'm always, you know, I want to be extra careful. I don't want to deploy any human methods or human cleverness when it comes to serving God. No. We need to do God's work in God's way. We need to do the work of the Lord according to God's word. Amen. We should not adopt new methods and human strategies to bring down God's presence. The only God appointed method to bring down God's presence is by true worship. The only God appointed method to bring down God's presence is by true worship. Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Praises of his people. I always think when Solomon wanted to dedicate the temple, he prayed unto the Lord. He says, God of heaven, God who is in heaven, listen to my prayers. When Solomon prayed, where was God? In heaven. Listening to his prayers. He says, God in heaven, listen to my prayers. Hearken. But his father made a different statement. David said, God inhabits the praises of his people. Do you understand? When we pray, where is God? In heaven. When you praise, he comes down from heaven. He inhabits the praises of his people. It is through true praise and worship. I, I mean meaningful worship. Reasonable worship. What is meaningful worship? Romans 12. One, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, meaningful, true service, true worship, presenting our bodies as holy, living sacrifices, acceptable to God. The Levites bore the ark of God upon their shoulders. Now to bear this ark of God upon the shoulders, first of all, they have to bend themselves. If they have to bear the ark of the covenant upon themselves, they cannot even touch it. Do you know that? They put two poles on the sides of the ark of the covenant and they have to bear the ark of God on two poles. For that ark of God to be laid upon them, first of all, these Levites, they have to bend themselves, they have to go on the bended knees so that the ark of God, the poles will be laid upon the shoulders. Amen. In the same way, for the church to bear God's presence, first of all, we must bend ourselves. We must be willing to humble ourselves. We must be willing to go on a bended knees to bear the presence of the Lord. Amen. I remember the words of our late past, the beloved, 
Pastor G. Sundaram always used to say in our pastor's meeting, bend yourself to bend the world. If you are not willing to bend yourself, you cannot bend the world for Jesus. Do you want to bear the presence of God? Humble yourself, bend yourself. Go on a bended knees. The Lord says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive the sins and will heal the land. But God is saying this morning, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, not the sins of unbelievers. Are you listening? Not the sins of the unbelievers. God is talking about the sins of believers. God is talking about the sins of the servants of God. Amen. God says, I will hear them from heaven and will forgive the sins of my people. When, when the sins of my people are forgiven, the land will be healed. If we humble ourselves, fast and pray, the glory of the Lord that is in the heart of God shall fill God's house and people, God's people shall be abundantly blessed. God will bless the land only through you, only through me, only through the church. The city of Chennai can be blessed. Do you know that? Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. How did David fulfill God's purpose in Zion? Sought for the ark of God. Number two, in Zion, David prepared a place for the ark of God. It's very important. David in Zion prepared a place for the ark of God. See how David was so faithful and careful in fulfilling God's purpose in his life. Such Davids should be raised in our church and in our generations. Now after David brought the ark of God into Jerusalem, into Zion, he prepared a place for it. Turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 1. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God. Do you see that in your Bible? Prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. David gave the rightful place for the ark of God. We know that ark of God typifies God's presence. We as a New Testament church should give the rightful place to God's presence. Church, I want to tell you this morning, in a service like this, only God's presence is important. Pastor is not important. Nobody is important. What is important? What is the most important thing? God's presence. Imagine if God's presence is not here. What's the use of a preaching? What's the use of a singing? What's the use of worshipping God? Amen. All that we need is God's presence. In order to prepare, listen, in order to prepare a rightful place for the ark of God, David must have spent Lot of time, money, and energy. Right? Yes. The Bible says, he prepared a place for the ark of God. Imagine how a king of Israel would have prepared a place for God's ark. He was a man who loved God so much. He was a man who honored God so much. How much effort, how much time, how much money, how much energy David would have spent in preparing a rightful place for the ark of God. What do we understand? Friend, God's presence is not cheap. God's presence is not free. Somebody say amen. Salvation is free. 
But God's presence is not free. It's very costly. We have to pay a heavy price for God's presence. We must be willing to pay the price for God's presence. Holiness is the price that you and I can pay for God's presence. What is the price that you and I can pay for God's presence? Come on. Holiness, holiness. What does the Bible say? No, no text. Turn your Bible to Deuteronomy. Chapter 23 verse 14. Well known verse. Deuteronomy. Chapter 23 verse 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy. That is, see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. What is the secret for God's presence? Come on. Holiness. Take a decision this morning, brother. Sister, take a decision. We are in the last days. These are the days where saints need to be sanctified. All that God expects from you and me is holiness. God whom we serve is a holy God. All holy God. Amen. I've already shared with you from Isaiah chapter 6. Those cherubims. They were not able to bear the holiness of God. What does the Bible say? They covered their eyes with the two wings. Covered their feet with two wings. And with the two wings. They flew. And they said holy, holy, holy is the Lord of us. They did not say that. They cried one to another. They did not just say that. They did not just say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, as we many times say, don't we? In the Hebrew Bible, it's totally different. They were not able to bear the presence of the Lord, therefore, they were crying one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Such is the holiness of God. When Isaiah saw that holiness, he said, Oh, I am a man of unclean lips, and I am a man who live among the people of unclean lips. That means, I'm a man of unclean lips, I'm a man of, come on, unclean ears. That's what he says. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I'm a man who live among the people of, that means what? I'm a man of unclean ears. Sanctify me, Lord. Sanctify me. The Bible says the fire taken from the altar touched the lips of Isaiah and he was sanctified. He was sanctified. And, the, and Isaiah said, Here am I, send me, God. Here am I, send me. How many of you believe that God told Isaiah to go? When Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. How many of you believe that God told Isaiah to go? Did God tell Isaiah to go? No. Come on. Turn the pages of your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Did God tell Isaiah to go? Did God ask Isaiah whether you will go Isaiah? Then what happened? Then how come Isaiah says, Lord, here am I, send me. See, it was a conversation between father and the son. It was a conversation. Look into that verse carefully. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who will go for us? Father asking the son. Hmm? It was a conversation between the Godhead. And when Isaiah heard that conversation, Isaiah said, Lord, here am I, send me. I am available. But before Isaiah could hear the voice, before Isaiah could hear the conversation, he has to be sanctified. Do you want to hear the voice of God? 
Do you want to hear the heavenly conversation? Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to sanctify you. Amen. Holiness. It's the price that God is expecting from you and me to pay for his presence. Why the Lord was with Joseph? Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. Why? Why the Lord was with Joseph? When there were so many other people, why should the Lord be with Joseph? Holiness. What did he say? How can I do this wickedness? How can I do this great wickedness against my Lord? Holiness. Church, if you are a holy man, if you are a holy woman, the greatest blessing is God's presence with you. It makes all the difference. Amen. David was a man who loved God's presence. Psalm 16 verse 11. I love this psalm. Psalm 16 verse 11. It's beautiful. Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Where is the fullness of joy? In the presence. In the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. What I am trying to drive in our hearts this morning is this. David prepared a place for the ark of God. David prepared a place for God's presence. How many of you are willing to prepare yourself for God's presence? Church, you and I need to prepare ourselves to bear God's presence. Many believers, they just get up in the morning, amen, refresh themselves, dress up and come to church. Such believers will not be blessed. God wants to see your preparation. Before we could come into God's presence, we have to prepare ourselves. If you have not done it so far, at least do it in the future. Before you could come to church, you need to prepare yourself. Wait upon the Lord. Offer a prayer to God. Lord, today speak to me. What is that you want me to say, God? Make me a blessing to somebody. What is your word for me today, God? Church, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. If you can spend some time preparing yourself before you could come to God's house, that day service will be very special to you. Amen. You don't get anything without preparation. Am I right? How did you get your breakfast today? You need to prepare. <laughs> if you don't prepare, you don't get anything. You don't get anything. Not even just one square meal you can expect without preparation. How can you expect God's blessing without preparation? Amen. For everything you need preparation. Think of Mary Magdalene who came to the sepulcher early part of the day. What did she bring? What did she bring? The ointment, the spices. To bring those spices and ointment, just imagine... How much time should I spend in preparing them? Amen. She must have spent a lot of time in preparing those perfumes and ointment to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. That means she had prepared an half before she could come to the sepulcher early part of the day to see Jesus. And that's the reason Jesus appeared unto her. Do you know something? The disciples of Jesus Christ also came to the very same place. Did they see Jesus? Come on. What happened? The disciples of Jesus who were with him for three and a half years, they also came to the same place where Mary Magdalene came. Did they see Jesus? Did they see the risen Lord? Who saw? Why? Why did she see? Preparation, brother. Preparation. 
We all come to the same church, ACA Perambur. You can also come, I can also come. But who will see Jesus? Only those who prepare themselves. Only those people who prepare themselves will receive the message from the Lord. All the others will just receive a message and they will go, but you will not hear God speak to you. You cannot be blessed. You will just listen to a message. You say, oh, today message was good or whatever. You will put a mark to the preacher and you will leave the church. But if you are in the habit of preparing yourself before you could come into God's presence, you will be blessed. God will single you out for his blessing. God will make a difference between you and other people. Amen. How special she was to see the risen Lord first. It all depends on her preparation the previous day. Amen. David prepared a place for the ark of God. Amen. Anyone, anyone who will bear the presence of God will be honored. Will be honored. But all cannot bear the presence of God. Only those who prepare themselves. Sanctify themselves. Spend time in God's presence. But if you prepare yourself. And if you bear the presence of the Lord. You will be honored by the Lord. Amen. I have only one desire in my life. God is my witness. And that is to bear the presence of the Lord. This is my cry every day. Lord, wherever I go, I want to bear your presence. I'm not asking for anything else. All I'm asking is your presence with me. I want to bear your presence. How many of you have this desire this morning? On the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem, on the 10th day of Nizan, who walked on the red carpet? Who walked on the red carpet? Okay. But the red carpet was spread out for whom? But who walked on it? What is the secret? The donkey bore Jesus. <laughs> as long as you and me bear God's presence, God will make you and me to walk on the red carpet. Amen. If you are a man, woman, bearing the presence of God, I tell you, you are the VIP. Amen. God will single out such people, you know. God puts a difference between this people and other people. I know God is speaking to us this morning. Now for others' blessing, listen to me, for others' blessing and deliverance, we are called to bear the presence of God. Not only for our blessings. Even for others' blessings, we have to bear the presence of the Lord. Do you want to be a blessing to others? Do you want to be a blessing to somebody? Do you want God to use you for others' deliverance? Then you need to bear God's presence. Because there is power in the ark of God. There is power in God's presence. I'll just show you one example. There are many examples in the Bible. Just show you one example. Turn your Bible to the book of Joshua. Chapter 3. Well known pastor scripture. Joshua chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Joshua chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all its banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zariton, and those that came down to the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Now picture the scene before we rise. The people of Israel had to cross over Jordan. Now the priests bearing the ark, when the feet touched the brim of the water, Jordan parted into two. Now the priests they stood in the midst of River Jordan. They stood in the midst of River Jordan. It's something amazing. Now let's read 13. And it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, 
And the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from the tents to pass over Jordan, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, the waters which came down stood still. Verse 17 is very important. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. Where did it stand? In the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground. Until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Picture the scene. The priests that bore the ark of the covenant stood firm on the dry ground in the midst of the river Jordan till all the people of Israel passed over Jordan. I cannot forget one incident which happened years ago in 1980s. I was terribly stranded in a heavy traffic in Mount Road. There was a very big procession. I was told some central minister was just passing that side and there were more than 10,000, 15,000 people in a big procession. Now there was some political unrest and there was a very big procession. To tell you the truth, for three hours, all the vehicles were stranded there. Just because of 15,000 people, because of that procession. Three hours, three hours, all the vehicles came to stand still, stranded. And I was also standing there with my scooter. As I was waiting there for three hours, not able to move an inch, as I was standing there, God reminded me of this incident. Imagine for 10,000, 15,000 people, how many hours? Three hours, traffic jam. Now imagine for six lakhs people, more than six lakhs people, to cross Jordan. How many hours the priest would have stood there bearing the Ark of the Covenant? Can you make that calculation? Can you tell me how many hours? For six lakhs people. For six lakhs people to cross over Jordan, how many hours priests would have stood there firm on the dry ground in the midst of the river Jordan? Church, I want you to understand. This is the calling of every true servant of God. For a believer to cross over Jordan, servants of God have to stand in the presence of God for so many hours. Many people don't realize. Many people don't realize. Many people don't realize what happens in the prayer closet of a man of God. Amen. For people to cross over Jordan. For believers to cross over hurdles. For believers to cross over the barrier, the obstacles. From death to life. Servants of God have to stand hours and hours and hours in the presence of the Lord. Amen. That's a calling of a true servant of God. Not only for the servants of God. If you want to be a blessing to somebody, if you, want, if you want to bring deliverance to others' lives through the Holy Ghost's power, we have to stand before God, bearing the ark of God, bearing the presence of the Lord. How many of you now tell me, how many of you want to become a blessing to others? Friend, that's not easy. There's tremendous sacrifices involved. People take ministry very lightly. I'm sorry to say, many believers, many, many people, even sons of God, take ministry very lightly. But they don't realize there's such a lot of sacrifices involved. The ark of God must have been very, very heavy. Do you know that? Bearing the ark of God, standing for hours in the midst of the river Jordan is not an easy task. It was made of, ark of the covenant was made of what? Was made of what? What wood? Shitty wood. 
very heavy wood shitty wood it was made ark of the covenant was made of shitty wood overlaid with pure beaten gold must have been very very heavy just imagine you know in our worship time sometimes we feel reluctant even to put up our hands for quite some time you know we feel the pain am i right empty hands friend come on i'm are you with me even to lift up our empty hands just for 5 minutes 10 minutes we are finding it so hard we drop a we put down our hands but the priests they bear the ark of god upon their shoulders for so many hours for 6 lakhs of people to cross over river jordan read the verse again verse 17 joshua chapter 3 and verse 17 and the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of jordan and all the israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over jordan is there anybody who desires to serve god who love to serve god if you feel there's a calling of god upon your life are you willing to pay the price are you willing to sacrifice are you willing to go through pain it's very painful at times very painful but if you're willing to go through that pain god can make you a blessing to somebody God can use you for others deliverance. God can put a difference between you and other people. Hallelujah. David prepared a place for the ark of God. Amen. Friend, today ark of God is not going to rest in some place which you and I prepare. God wants to rest in you. God wants to rest in me. Amen. Be on the temple of the holy ghost god wants to dwell in you god wants to dwell in me if we have to bear the presence of god we need to prepare our lives shall we close our eyes right now i am not through god willing will continue the same message next sunday morning but i feel urge in my spirit to spend few moments in prayer if possible Why don't we stand up to our feet? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Every eye closed. Begin to feel the awesome presence of God. Tell the Lord this morning, Lord, I am not asking you for anything else. I am not asking you for anything else. All that I ask of you, is your presence I want to be a blessing to somebody I want to be a blessing to somebody Says so are you willing to pay the price It's not cheap it's not free it's very costly such a lot of sacrifices in what sometimes we have to go through terrible pain but how many of you say i'm willing lord i'm willing i'm willing to go through that pain for others i'm willing to go through that pain for the sake of my brother for the sake of my sister for the sake of other families I am willing to bear your presence. I feel the mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Receive a fresh anointing from the Lord right now. God is touching some of you. Brother God is touching you right now. Sister God is touching you right now. The mighty power of God is flowing. God wants to restore the ministry which you have lost. God wants to restore the presence his presence which you have lost in your life. God wants to restore the spiritual blessings. The spiritual blessings. 
You have come in, you need a fellowship with the Lord, which you have lost in your life. God wants to restore it today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Heal yourself right now. My friend, if God has blessed you, thank God for it. But don't just be engrossed in the blessing and forget the ark of God in your life. Thank God for the blessing. But don't just be engrossed in the blessing and forget the ark of God. It is dangerous. It is dangerous to lose God's presence. It is dangerous to lose God's presence. We can lose anything in life but not the presence of the Lord. Sorrowfully, Saul did not seek after the ark of God but David did. And we know the end of David. His end was glorious. David's end was glorious but Saul's end was a tragedy. Sister, God has chosen you. Brother, God has chosen you. The Lord says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. What a privilege. What a privilege. There are thousands and thousands and millions of people all over the world, but God has chosen you. God has chosen me. God has predestinated us, called us. Justified us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to bear your presence. I want to bear your presence. Come on, commune with the Lord. It's a time of the Holy Spirit. It's a time to commune with the Lord. Get connected with God. Brother, get connected with God. Sister, get connected with God. Renew your broken fellowship with God. Thank you. Reflect on what you heard this morning. I know in my spirit God has spoken to you. God's word will never turn void without accomplishing its purpose for which it is sent. If you know that God has spoken to you, harden not your heart, but heal yourself. For God has a great plan and purpose concerning you. The most important thing in your life and mine is to fulfill that purpose. Before we close our eyes here on this earth, I must fulfill God's purpose and plan in my life. Let this be our cry and prayer every day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for ministering to us. Lord, you are so very concerned about us. You love us so much. And you have spoken to us in love this morning. We beseech you, dear Lord, that you will continue to speak to us. I pray for this dear congregation. With all our hearts as your servants, we bless your people, Lord. May your people be blessed. More than anything else, with your presence, with your abiding presence, every moment of the day. May your hand rest upon your people. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with each one of us this day till the Lord Jesus Christ comes.